In this session, we're going to talk about the metals, nonmetals, metalloids, their characteristics, and where we can find them in the periodic table. We're going to start looking at the periodic table that uh, we get with our star test. You'll notice that even on your star test, you're going to have a periodic table with a bold line that goes down through it. Okay, so this bold line right over here. That is really important to us. Okay, that's going to help us to know where our metals, nonmetals, and metalloids are. Okay, so the first thing we're going to just talk about where they are. Anything that is touching that bold line, so boron, silicon, arsenic, tellurium, astatine, polonium, antimony, and germanium. All of those are metalloids. The exception that is touching the line is aluminum. That is not a metalloid. All of the rest of these, everything here over, these are all considered metals. Okay, so these would be metals over here. These would be metalloids in green and these over here what we would consider non-metals okay so let's talk about the characteristics of metals non-metals and metalloids those are not Okay, one of the first characteristics when we talk about metals is we talk about metals are malleable. So what we mean by malleable is that they can, the metal can be formed into sheets and formed. It can be uh, pounded into sheets. So this is maybe pounded into thin sheets. You can see this uh, aluminum foil pressed over a penny. It can be formed. It can be molded. Okay, we can also talk about metals being ductile. So ductile means may be formed into wire. And think of all the wire that you've seen in your house. It's always metal. Okay, metals are also good conductors of heat. You can see somebody is uh, boiling something here on their stove and they have a metal spoon in. When they go to grab that metal spoon, they're going to be in for quite a surprise. As they grab that spoon, it's a great conductor of heat and it's likely to burn their hands. Metal is also a good conductor of electricity. So one of the reasons you don't want to stick your fork in an electrical outlet is because it's made of metal. Um, it's going to not make for a very good day. Think about all the wire in your house again. It's made of metal, so it's a good conductor of electricity. So metals, they're all good conductors of electricity and heat. They're malleable. They are ductile. And the final word that we use to describe them is luster. And so what does luster mean? It means they are shiny. We know this. Whenever we think of metals, we always think of, of shiny chrome. Okay. Nonmetals are the exact opposite of what we would think of as metals. Nonmetals, they tend to be brittle. It means they can easily break down into powders and can be crushed. And they're often gases. Not all of them, but many of them are gases at room temperature. So this is sulfur right here. It's easily uh, pounded down and it, it forms into a, a brittle powder as opposed to being malleable. Right, Nonmetals are poor conductors of heat, poor conductors of electricity. They cannot be spun into, into wires. They're very dull. They're, they're not shiny. If they're a gas, they're, they're often transparent. So they're exact opposite of what we would expect with a metal. Okay, and finally we look at metalloids. And metalloids are that in between. Metalloids can be have some characteristics of nonmetals and not some characteristics of metals. Okay. In general, 
Teenagers like metalloids because one of the metalloids that we have is silicon. And we've been able to figure out in silicon how to turn it into a semiconductor, how to use it to sometimes allow electricity and other times prevent electricity. By being able to control when it can send electricity, we can send codes through. So send electricity through, stop, on, off, on, off. And as we do that, it creates a series of codes, zero, zero, zeros, one, zeros. Zeros being when it's off, ones being when it's on. And as we do that, this is the language of binary. And that's what allows all of our computer devices. So if we don't have metalloids, we don't have iPhones, we don't have anything that has a circuit board, our TVs don't work, our uh, computers don't work, our video games don't work. So metalloids share characteristics of both metals and nonmetals. Okay, so to summarize, metals are on the left side of the periodic table to the left of the stair step. They're good conductors of electricity. They're good conductors of heat, malleable, which means they can be pounded down into thin sheets, ductile, they can be turned into wires, and they have luster, which means they are shiny. Metalloids, which are touching the bold line on your periodic table, with the exception of aluminum, have characteristics of both nonmetals and metals. Silicon is a perfect example of that, which is often used in semiconductors. Nonmetals are the opposite of metals. They're on the right side of the periodic tables. Many of them are gases, including the noble gases. They are poor conductors of electricity, poor conductors of heat. They are not malleable. In fact, they are brittle. And they are very dull. They do, they do not have luster. They are not shiny.